What's a Frisky Dingo? You might not have heard of this show, but I bet you've seen this. Lana. Lana! What? Archer gives a lot of thanks to Frisky Dingo, right down to his look. This was Adam Reed and Matt Thompson's first series. They're great at poking fun with cliches and hero stories. That's why the Archer series has survived for 11 years, making fun of the James Bond slash spy movie genre. But before that, they made fun of the superhero genre. Unfortunately, Frisky Dingo came out just before the superhero boom in 2006. Iron Man and Hulk just started a few years later. If it had come out any time later, I think the show would have gone on for a lot longer. I love superheroes from Hulk to Gridman, seeing stuff blow up, martial arts, people saving lives, but I also love when they make fun of everything that makes no sense in the genre. Like, why doesn't the city that gets attacked daily by monsters ever have proper evacuation systems or get abandoned? How do the villains pay for everything? Any type of trope or situation you expect out of a cape show, Dingo tears apart from origins like Batman to heroes creating villains, nothing is sacred. You see these grandiose plans from bad guys. I'm gonna destroy the planet with this massive high tech gun. You never really think about how do they do that? Who built it? Not every supervillain can draw better than stick figures or can weld metal. This series also flips the starring roles. It features the main villain, Killface, a seven foot muscle demon looking guy. His origin is left open and loves his dramatics. I am kill face his end goal is to destroy the entire planet for reasons kill face never really says why using the annihilatrix it's hero time a 10 mile high jet engine stuck into the ground to push the planet into the sun not only that kill face is a huge diva from shooting his evil villain video 15 times shall we do it again it's fine it's fine okay it's fine Thank you. all right to trying to figure out how to pay broadcast of the entire world his master plan the fusion chamber alone costs nine billion all while struggling to raise his son half actor half supportive father and not really good with technology. Now, at first you think he's not really a villain. They were going in that direction, but then bam, he'll kill anyone that gets on his nerves. You want to laugh at him, but then you remember he made a guy a puppet corpse. Now, I gotta say Killface is the most sane character in the series. Honestly, sometimes I can't even call him the villain with how some of the other characters end up. Of course, there has to be a hero for your villain. That comes in the form of Xander Cruz, the multi-billion dollar playboy that turns into Awesome X to fight crime. Lost his mother and father at a young age, vowing to never let the innocent suffer until he screws up and gets people killed. A mixture of Batman and Iron Man, obviously, but it goes beyond that. You may notice some similarities between Awesome X and Archer. Great. Can you hang on a second? Okay. Okay. Click. Okay, maybe more than some, but he can be really screwed up in some ways. Wastes money, doesn't care about maintaining his company, a complete moron when it comes to his secret identity. Although I'm gonna give him credit. He's doing things that some heroes should do. After all, you are a superhero. There's nothing wrong with you trying to make money off yourself. So he makes action figures of Awesome X. The show can be really confusing at times. Like I said before, Killface is this world ending murderer, but he'll try to help out his son, be a good parent. While you have Awesome X, the hero, killing his officers over a mistake or not caring about his reporter girlfriend. So there's really no one you can say is the hero or root for. Now, one of the reasons why probably people never heard of the show, it's a very low budget series. I don't really care about that, but if you thought Archer's animation was bad, Dingo was made before they used the puppet tool in After Effects. The cast is pretty small. We have Simon Killface's son. He's kind of a mess. He's the rebellious teenager, but also has some sociopathic tendencies. Not much is known about their past, thanks to Killface not wanting to speak about it. While Simon acts dumb, he can actually be a good villain when he sets out to prove himself. He respects his father, but at the same time hates him for not being included in his evil plans. I didn't care for him much. Without their backstory being explained and the lack of later seasons develop him more, there was not enough here for me to like Simon. He's mostly stuck grumbling and breaking cereal bolts. Grace Ryan, the town's newspaper, who looks really similar to Mary Jane Watson. If you watch the series, you'll get why. She has a 
crap relationship for Cruz. Now, some of the blame does go to her. She is beyond obsessed with him. When did you freeze my sperm? Oh, I always do that. Calling him every time she finishes a report, wanting to go out all the time. You can see the relationship is not good, but Cruz being the dick he is, doesn't break it off. And rather just have sex with a hooker. Cruz will play with everyone just to get out of a problem, even down to his team, the Exticles. They're basically a big stormtrooper joke. A what if we explore the lives of a stormtrooper? He will lie to their faces even after killing them by mistake, all to cover up why they're being fired. You start feeling bad for all the characters around Awesome X and Killface. They all turn into murderous evil people because they're just treated that badly. Ultimately, Awesome X gets what he wants, new villains to stop and make merch on. And Killface is used by everyone, he gets insulted all over the place, where it all culminates at the launching of his death rocket. The good things about the series, it turns everything upside down on the superhero genre. There's always something referenced from comics and even other things like Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, and Star Trek. With the small cast, everyone gets developed pretty good, with the exception of Simon. Even characters you think that are going to be a one-off joke, somehow they get all mixed up in this mess. The finale gives some surprises and answers to questions, but the bad is mainly focused on not getting more seasons. There was a lot of things left unanswered. There was even a spin-off series of Frisky Dingo produced where it continued off with the Exticles getting their own show. They only produced two episodes and axed it. I don't even know if you can find those two episodes anywhere. The series is very hectic. The characters even point that out in one episode. Even though the show doesn't get a full conclusion, I still think it's worth to check it out, especially if you're a fan of Archer, Aqua Teen, Hunger Force, The Venture Brothers. It has that same type of style. Some of the voice cast from Archer is in Frisky Dingo, but you could get annoyed that Xander Cruz is 90% identical to Archer with Ray's voice. It's time. You might even get annoyed watching Archer now that you know he existed somewhere else. If you're familiar to comics, you'll get several laughs at the stuff they do in the show. I personally wish they had linked up Frisky Dingo to Archer. It would bring some confusion, but they've already done crazy crap in Archer from having a whole season in his head. But I think the universe could work together. It's a very short series. There's 24 episodes, but those episodes are actually 11 minutes long. So in reality, there's really 12 and a half regular length episodes, 14 if you include the spin-off series. Thanks for checking out the review. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you remember a movie or a show that's long been forgotten, good or bad, leave it as a suggestion below. I'm always on the lookout for obscured stuff.